الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وبعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله brothers and sisters I'm exceedingly exceptionally excited to be speaking to you guys today why because today's video is for the game so game I'm gonna speak to you for the rest of the video now I heard my boy John Fontaine he checked you over in Manchester in one of the restaurants he was the white dude with a purple hoodie talking about Islam. I know he kind of caught you off guard. But before I give you the message, and I request you to stay in tune because it's going to be something very beneficial indeed, I want to present you with a little gift. But the gift isn't for you specifically. It's for your beloved daughter, Kali. And I want you to pass it on to her and make sure you let her know that this gift is from Uncle Imran. And Uncle Imran says hi, and he's given this to you. So the gift is as follows. Obviously you named her Cali after California. And we know that California is the sunshine state of the West Coast. But California actually is a lot more than that. I mean, if you take the name, for example, where did the name California come from? You know, the Spanish people that actually discovered and conquered that region of the world, the landscape was really familiar to them because there was a famous novel at the time that was written in 1510 in Spain that would describe a land that looked very familiar to the land they were standing on here, which is today California. And in the book, that land was ruled by a queen and the queen's name was Califia. And because that land was so similar to the land that was in that book that they knew, they decided to name the land after the queen, California, after Califia. But you know what's interesting is the fact that Califia is not a Spanish word. It originates from the Quranic Arabic word Khalifa because a Khalifa is the word used to describe a ruler of a nation, the ruler of the Muslim people. And the Muslims ruled for 800 years over Spain and actually two thirds of the known world from the footsteps of China in the east to the shores of Spain in the west. And because they had that, the Spanish people were able to basically get that name from there. So I thought it would be pretty cool for you to be able to you know, share with your daughter the origin of her name. Not only is it a name from the Quran, not only is it a name describing, you know, leadership and honor and prestige and justice, but she's named after a queen in a Spanish book. So I thought that's a bit cool. Now, with that aside, I want to talk to you now, G. I want to talk to you about Islam, but I want to talk to you about Islam in a bit of a different way. Because I know you must have spoken to Muslims before. Napoleon, Freeway, Loon, you know these guys. You travel around the world, you know my people, G. So I wanted to come at it in a bit of a different way. I'm confident that you know there's something special about the Quran. I know that. But in case there was any doubts, please check this video I made for Eminem in which I explained to M clearly without a shadow of a doubt that this book is the divine speech of our master. The word that was sent from him upon the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. But before I go any deeper, you may be asking why on earth I'm reaching out to you, G. It's because, with the BS aside, I actually think you're a good man. And I just start giving um, people in Australia, um, homeless people, $100 here, $200 there. And while I was there on my Instagram, I, I saw a picture um, of a little girl who, who was murdered in Los Angeles. And um, I instantly got on the phone with my business manager and told him to find the parents and uh, we ended up giving 10000 to the funeral costs. And then I came back and attended the funeral and just furthered um, the Robin Hood project. And um, that's... You know. And not only that, you know, we have a saying or an understanding in our religion that if you want to see how good a man is, look at his relationship with his family. Because you could be the people's champion outside, but how you are with those you're consistently with is what counts. And when I saw this clip of you talking about your daughter, I was like, yo, this is a good guy. She is, uh, for any man that has a daughter, um, she's everything to me. She means more to me than life itself. Um, when I look into her eyes, it, that's, that's all I need to do to get me going. And it, I mean, I just, I'm motivated. I, when I look at the little girl, I love her. It's almost like she's a friend or somebody else's child because I love her that much. I'm so intrigued by this little girl. I study her and she's like, Daddy, what are you looking at? And I'm just like, you. She's, she, means, she means so much to me. And I got, that's my cutoff time because if I talk about her for more than 30 seconds, yeah. I cry. You're well up. I know. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Let's get back. Okay. So what's the message that I want to share with you? Game, 
I want to talk to you about Islam in a way where it can benefit your daughter. Because I know how much you care about her. So I want to give you a new perspective to look through. And I'm confident out of your concern for this girl and the rest of your children, you will consider what it is that I have to say. The reality is game that your master created your daughter to have a relationship with him. He gifted her to you so she could then be born and have a relationship with her master. The Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him said that every single child is born upon the correct religion. However, it is the parents that make them go astray. It is her right to have a relationship with Allah again. And it is her right upon you as a father to teach her how to have that relationship. If you don't, I want to paint a very scary picture that the Quran paints for you. You see, those that reject Allah and disbelieve in Him, those people are going to enter the hellfire again. They will go into hellfire for eternity. And God forbid that happened to you or your daughter because I swear by God, I only wish goodness for you. I want you to just imagine that you and your daughter are in the following situation. See, in chapter 80 of the Quran, God talks to us about the day of judgment where he will resurrect each and every single one of us. He tells us on that day, Mar'u, that man who is selfless, that man who is chivalrous, that man who is heroic and always looking out for the people. On that day, that man will not only run away from everyone, but he will run away from his wife, he will run away from his mom, he will run away from his daughter. And his daughter will run away from him. You might think to yourself, that will never happen because you love your daughter so much. But I want you to consider the possibility of what it might take for you to run away from your daughter. You see, on that day, your afterlife, your future for eternity is at stake. Paradise and hellfire are in clear view. Those who believed and had a relationship will enjoy eternal ecstasy. Those who did not, eternal pain and torment. On that day, people will want revenge. And if you did not give your daughter the very minimum of learning about Allah to the best of your ability, on that day game, she will hate you for it. And she will want revenge. And I want to strip you of every single thing that you have. So you will run. And she will grab you. Or try to at least. But not only will she want revenge. And you run from her. Game, she will try to punish you. If, God forbid, I swear to you, I don't want this. God forbid she does end up there. She will punish you. In chapter 41 of the Quran, God explains. And this is not just her. This is also your millions of fans. You're a multi-platinum selling artist. You've got millions of people around the world that hang off the every word game. This is your daughter and every single person that bought your album and attended your concert and follows you on Twitter and likes your Facebook page. Allah says in chapter 41 that they will scream in the hellfire, Allah send to us those people that misled us in this world so we can put them under our feet and we can crush them so they are lower than us. وقال الذين كفروا ربنا أرنا الذين أطلنا من الجن والإنس نجعلهما تحت أقدامنا ليكونا من الأسفلين
And that's what will happen. Because you're in a position of influence, man. Over your children and over your fans. And on that day, if you didn't get them close to their objective, but rather took them away, they will hate you for it. The reality is, man, I, I, you don't even like this rap industry. You were going to retire. What possessed you to continue? I don't know, but perhaps my speculation would lead me to the conclusion that it is because you have become blinded by the fame and enjoyment of the worldly life that you are now experiencing. If that's the case, then considering the fact that your album is titled Jesus Peace, I thought it fitting to end this advice and reminder and call to you with a story from the life of Jesus himself. But this is the Quranic narrative. This is the Islamic narrative, not that from the Bible. The story goes as follows. Jesus is approached by a beautiful woman who happens to be a prostitute. Jesus asks her, he says, who are you? She responds and says, I am the dunya. I am this material worldly life that you chase after. And Jesus said, let me ask you a question. How many partners have you had? How many partners have you had a relationship with? And she says, there is not a single man that has entered upon me except I have had relations with him. We're talking billions of people game, including yourself and everyone else for that matter. Then Jesus asked her the all important question. He said, how many of those partners have you been faithful to, a woman? And his words need to be written in gold game. She said, there is not a single partner that has entered upon me except that I have not been faithful to any of them. You can chase this hole all you want, bro. But this life is a hole you can never catch. Because you can try and get as much of it as you can, but when you enter your grave, it will leave you. Of course, in the Quran, Allah says, take your share of this worldly life. Enjoy it. There was only one thing of the worldly life other than your good deeds that you will take with you into the afterlife. And that is your coffin. That is that white shroud that they will wrap you in when they bury you in your grave. And game, that white shroud does not have any pockets for you to put any of that change and wealth, that paper that you acquired. There are no seats for your family members to accompany you. It is you alone, ready to be questioned and judged by your master and on that day you'll be resurrected and I sincerely hope that Allah and I pray and I ask every Muslim who watches this to bow their head down and pray that Allah opens your heart and allows you to experience guidance and eternal bliss and the kind of happiness that we feel. I request everyone please pray for game and send this video to game's Twitter here it is and game I request you to holler at Napoleon. Holler at any Muslims, you know. Holler at me. Don't worry, I'm not a bum lick, bro. I have other claims to fame. As far as you're concerned, I don't get paid to make these videos. I care about you, G. So holler at me. If not, holler at one of my brothers. Salaamu Alaikum. Peace. Share the video. يوم يفر المرء من أخيه وأمه وأبيه وصاحبته وبني لكل امرئ منهم يومئذ شأن يغنيه.